Whenever we diagnose a patient with severe aortic stenosis, it's time to intervene. Basically, uh, the two options that we have to treat severe aortic stenosis, either surgical aortic valve replacement, so open heart surgery versus TAVR, or transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And if the patient is prohibitive surgical risk, well, then the patient is a candidate for TAVR. If the patient is high risk or moderate risk, the patient has an option. And then low risk, the patient has the option to be randomized in this controlled trial that we're comparing TAVR versus SAVR. We were the first ones approved uh, in the state uh, where we we're actually taking low risk aortic stenosis patients and we are running a randomized trial to truly examine whether catheter-based valve is better or equal to or not as good as surgical implantation. From a patient perspective, it gives them all of the options to treat their aortic stenosis. If you go to another center and you're deemed a, a low-risk patient, you may only be offered an opportunity to have a surgical aortic valve replacement, but we can give you the option of enrolling in a clinical trial that'll give you the chance to be randomized to transcatheter aortic valve replacement. You're also providing information to the, to the community for aortic stenosis in the medical community for how we treat patients in the future. How, how will aortic stenosis be treated five years from now? What will it, what will be the recommendations? Some patients need to be put to sleep for the catheter-based valve technology, but the majority of them do not and can be handled with just intravenous sedation, and the anesthesiologist guides us through that process. So last year, 95% of our patients we did under local anesthesia and very mild sedation using the femoral artery. We go from the groin to the heart, uh, under local anesthesia, again, this is very important. Patient is talking and awake. The procedure lasts one and a half to two hours. With catheter-based technology, we become a national demonstration center to be able to do the catheter-based valve with the patient awake and under very mild sedation. This has tremendously diminished the incidence of certain complications that surround this procedure, and it has significantly shortened the length of time the patient has to be in the hospital afterward. It is also takes much less of a toll on the patient. And this is a patient in whom we are getting up and letting walk that afternoon and home within two to three days of the procedure. If we can do that, we really have accomplished something that is an extraordinary leap forward. If you look at the TVT registry, which is the nationwide registry of transcatheter valve uh, implantations, uh, you'll see that the median length of stay is still six days. So it's much uh, longer length of stay compared with hours that we perform the procedure under local anesthesia. We are treating patients every single day of the week with transcatheter valve replacement, and we are treating low-risk patients, intermediate-risk patients, high and extreme surgical risk candidates. And in the future, we hope to be able to offer a full spectrum of valve replacements uh, through a catheter-based approach. That's the, the goal, ultimately, is to see what other opportunities we can offer to patients down the road. You're not just a mechanical device implanter. You're doing something that has extraordinary impact on a patient's life. We have to evaluate all of you, not just the heart, to make the most appropriate decision. And it really is essential that that be done by someone to whom it really matters, not just someone who wants to do a procedure. In this particular kind of technology, both the surgical side and the catheter-based side, it's, it's just a delight to work with all of the folks involved because there's not a weak link in this chain. They're really, really good.